Well, I, I think the introduction could have not been better than what I've just heard in the past half hour. Um, we have been talking about um, solid materials and quality control. And I would like to talk about the other half. And the other half is the gas flow. You always have solids and gas. That's what the whole process is about. And gas flow measurement in the cement industry is fairly novel because in many spots and places, it has not been possible to measure gas flow properly. So that's really what we have been specializing on. And I'm very happy to talk about it today. We have users all around the world. I've seen in some of the chats, uh, people from most um, remote places participating from Myanmar, from, from Taiwan. I think I've seen Mary Song, one of our business partners, <laughs> but also other places in, in Africa. Um, so happy to talk to you today and let's go through it. <clears throat> the, like always, the, there are two targets for this. The, the one target is to optimize production and to get the whole process more flatlined uh, with, with a far more, uh, with far less fluctuations. The fluctuations that um, um, have been mentioned in the, in the previous presentation in material, you also have in gas flow. Many parts of the process in cement have huge fluctuations in gas flow, but they can't be measured. So we have developed a technology that is, makes it possible to measure and um, take care of these fluctuations and flatten them out so the first one was quality, and the second advantage you have of this is energy savings. You all know that the electricity bill for moving gas around the plant is gigantous. One of the biggest energy con uh, drains in a, in a cement plant is moving gas around. So measuring gas is the first step in order to have better control. So let's go through it. I will talk just briefly about who we are. Many people know us already. I'll keep that short. And then I will go right into the airflow measurement technology because measuring airflow in a dusty and hot environment is a major challenge. And frankly, there are not many companies on the planet who can do it. We have pioneered this area. And I think we are the company with the most installations in cement plant in hot and dusty flow areas. So I'm gonna go through how our system is working and explain this. And then I will go through a couple of examples and I'm going to show you also what the savings are and what um, operators of plants such as Holcim Lafarge or Heidelberg Cement or you know, many uh, Cimex, what they have done. So I'll give you a few examples. Our company has been around since 1995. We're located uh, in Barleben. Not many people know this little village, but it's close to the German city of Magdeburg, not far away from Berlin. And we have um, installed measurement systems for power, cement, waste to energy, and smelter industries around the world. So cement is not our only target, but cement is one of our biggest. And of course, um, as I mentioned, our products help to increase availability, save energy, and uh, with that, of course, also reduce carbon footprint. Um, here you can see our systems. They look quite different from a normal DP measurement. But you can already see in the lower right hand picture that is a typical down comer application how it looks like so, you know if you pull a sensor out you can see the whole sensor is covered with dust so these sensors are made to live in this dusty environment without the need for regular cleaning or maintenance we have clients that have not been looking at their sensors for years because they simply forget about them the sensors work completely digital and they don't need cleaning and I would like to explain this uh, in a little bit more detail now so you understand how our digital airflow measurement is working. Traditionally, people are using delta pressure measurement systems. So they have a delta pressure they measure, and out of the Bernoulli equation and the delta pressure, they calculate the gas flow. The big issue here is that you cannot measure the, the, the pressure differentials accurately and drift-free over time. So this way of measurement has not been very successful, especially if the gases are hot and therefore they are not very dense. So therefore you don't have much pressure to measure in the first place. Promicon have developed a system that's completely different. Our system has two sensors and these sensors, they are sensing the electrostatic charge of the gas flow inside the cement plant. So how is this working? You have sensor one and sensor two mounted on your duct. 
right? Now, when you have a dust flow going through a pipe, you will have the dust um, carry a certain electric charge. So if there is a cloud of particles going by your sensor, these particles might have a slight positive charge. Now, if they are in the vicinity of the sensor, the sensor itself will carry the opposite charge because according to Coulomb's law, the total sum of the charge is zero. So now you have clouds of particles going by the sensors. What happens? If you have clouds of particles that are going by, the density of the particles will fluctuate in a completely random erratic way. And that means that the electrostatic charge will also fluctuate and you can see basically a small current that you can record over time. So if we do that, we can see sensor one and sensor two. They both now record a random current. The current has no meaning itself. It's, it's really not relevant if there's a high amplitude or a low amplitude. The only thing that's relevant is that if a little distance downstream where we have the second sensor, that pattern over time will be similar. So you have two patterns that are similar to each other. Yeah, you can see with your own eyes in our two traces here in our trends, the similarity between them. So let's put them on top of each other. If you put them on top of each other, you will see they are similar indeed, but they are time shifted. Yeah, they are not exactly on top of each other. Of course, they are time shifted because the clouds of particles need a transition time from sensor one to sensor two. So if you now, Take these two traces, you put them into what we call a cross-correlation algorithm. The cross-correlation algorithm is basically matching the two and then shifts them until they, have the until they have the best match on top of each other, right? So it's a statistical calculation. Then you get the result. The result is a time shift. So you have two sensors with a distance, let's say 300 millimeters, and you have a time shift. What do you make of a distance and a time shift? You calculate a velocity. So what, we, the, what this measurement gives you is a digital velocity reading. You can then tell how fast is the gas flow going through your downcomer, your tertiary air duct, or your bypass duct. This is very, very important because the only variable that we are measuring is time, right? The sensors have a distance that is fixed. It's 300 millimeters. So the only thing that we calculate in a digital form is time. Why digital? Because we are sampling this trace, we are digitizing it, and then we are calculating it with a digital algorithm to find the time shift. And this measurement has a couple of very big advantages over any other measurement uh, that is doing gas flow in these hot gases. The main advantage is that the measurement is either physically present, you see that you have a value, a reading, and then this reading will be accurate. It will not drift. Yeah? If you clean the sensor, you put it back in, you will have the same reading as before. There will be no change in reading. Yeah? And uh, of course, the, 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 uh, the other possibility is that the signal fails. So between failure and non-failure, there's, there's just no in-between. So our company has been working on this measurement for over 20 years now to make it the most stable measurement in the industry for this sort of dusty flows. And we have many applications with no failures in many, many years. So the operator in the control room will have an accurate reading on the gas flow at all times. How does the measurement look like? You have a box, you have two sensors, you have a connection to the, to the box, and out the box comes a four to 20 milliamp signals, which basically indicates to you the flow velocity. If you now in your DCS system or your control system, multiply this with the cross-sectional area of your duct, and you compensate for temperature, you will basically have a standardized flow. Yeah? The pressure, we would always take, as a pressure, we would always take the barometric pressure. Yeah? If you have a little bit of overpressure from the fan, a few millibar, that, that is really not relevant. 
the main relevance you have with your thousand millibar barometric pressure. So you have your barometric pressure, you have a temperature, cross-section. These are all basic things that, 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 that you know. And then you take the velocity and then out of that, you have your standardized flow. That's basically how it works. So um, what we also have, which is not so relevant for cement, we sometimes have um, plants that have no dust present. For example, um, in, in smelters where you have a batch process, you sometimes have clean air. There for these plants, we have a range extender. This ionizer can uh, give an ionization pulse to the gas and therefore simulate a particle flow. So with this, you can uh, run uh, the measurement with and without dust. I will not explain much more about this. Please feel free to ask some questions later because in the cement applications, we don't have anything without dust. This is really for you know, power industry and smelt industry. So I think this is just a, a special version of this. But what I would like to mention here, we are talking about velocity measurements of gases ranging up to 1000 degrees C or 2000 F. We are talking about velocity ranges between three and 100 meters per second. And our system is a linear measurement. We do not have a squared relationship like, like delta pressure measurement. So we have a very wide span and we have a linear span. We can measure from zero dust to 3,000 grams per cubic meter, 3,000 grams. So we can measure the, the gas flow right out of a raw, a raw mill. If you have a raw mill, you would like to know what's the main gas flow. What's the main gas flow of the recirculation duct? You can measure all these flows. Right? Repeatability is our big thing. Um, it says 99.95. I think it's higher because we are having a digit. The digital clock repeatability is our repeatability. Now, how accurate is a digital clock? 10 to minus 5, 10 to minus 6. So repeatability is a non-issue. The typical accuracy, of course, depends on the ducting. If we have a long straight duct, such as a downcomer, it's not a big deal. You have a fairly flat flow profile because of the high velocity. If you have short ducts, such as exits from raw mill or exits from cement mills, we are happy to do a CFD calculation for you to see whether one measurement location with our sensors is sufficient or whether it's advisable to have two measurement locations so you can average the measurement. Well, that's basically it. The main advantage is no K factors, no calibration, no drift. Um, no big duct modifications necessary. You have two mounting lugs, you put the sensors in, and that is your measurement, right? So you don't have to put any orifice plate or any big modifications into the duct, no regular cleaning. So that's basically the main advantage of the measurement. I would like to show you where we have measured. We have done this in hundreds of applications around the world, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, um, you name it, there is no continent where this measurement has not been applied to a cement plant. And I, let me go through them. I mean, you just see a, a schematic here, vertical roller mill on the raw meal. That's certainly one of the big um, applications to know the gas flow through the raw mill. And in fact, it was one of the first very famous ones that we have done together with Holcim in a plant in the United States, in Midlothian in Texas. Uh, the operators were continuously overdrafting the raw mill, of course, because they were afraid that, um, you know, by too low gas flow, the raw mill might drown and they might simply <laughs> trip the mill. So like always, um, operators have to be on the safe side. They have to make sure production doesn't stop. They have a big responsibility. So the safety margin that they took was fairly large. And then instrumentation engineers said, what if we could measure the gas flow more accurately? We could not use fan power as an indication or some rough things. We could really measure the flow and we could reduce that safety margin and reduce the, the fan power. Yeah. Now, in all modern plants, you have variable frequency drives with your fan. So reduction of the flow means a huge reduction of motor power. It goes by the third order of magnet, third, third order. So, that was on one of the big examples. 
Uh, another one, of course, is bypass. Um, very often plants don't have a problem with this, but if they do, then the amount of bypass gas is, is important to know. And the, the next one would be downcomer. Downcomer is our most popular measurement. We have, we have more downcomer of cement plant measurements than any other measurement because that is the main flow coming out of the kiln as well as of the precalcine. So you would like to know what is the flow, the total flow that goes into this big ID fan. And we've seen many plants that have control issues. And I would like to remind again to my, to, to, to my predecessor who, who very nicely talked about process noise in, in solids. Here you have process noise in gas flow because you try to control the gas flow using the oxygen levels on the kiln inlet. Now, this is very crude. Uh, and if you have an additional uh, gas flow measurement, you can smooth out the gas flow much better. And that gives you a huge savings. Remember, I said on a variable frequency controlled fan, uh, the upswings are much more costly than a downswing. So if you can really flatten uh, the curve out, you save a huge amount of electric energy and you can run the gas flow through your kiln far more flatline. It's a big quality, um, a big quality uh, step. Then the, the, another big one I would like to mention is, the, is the, um, the tertiary air duct measurement. It has become very popular very difficult to measure. Even we were struggling in the beginning to make this measurement work reliably. We have now a couple of very good references and we have found a way to serve um, all the tertiary air ducts. Very important for the formation of NOx in your precalciner. How much combustion air are you putting in your precalciner? You don't get much oxygen from your, tertiary, from your, from your kiln. Most of the oxygen comes from the tertiary air. So, the control of the tertiary air needs a proper measurement. So let's go through some of these examples because I know that you will ask about return on investment. And I've, I will try to give you the answer a little bit with a couple of examples. Here, an example that I mentioned, uh, raw mill extraction of gas. Um, before or after the raw mill, we can, we can measure the gas flow through the raw mill. Right, vertical roller mill. The typical problem, as I mentioned, um, you need to achieve a certain minimum flow. And very often you have a certain security factor or tolerance, one sided tolerance, to have a higher flow than necessary. What we have done is we have implemented our system on the vertical roller mill outlet in order to measure the accurate gas flow. And this is very important because if you want to measure this and control the fan, you have to have a gas flow that is not drifting. If the operator needs to go out every day and clean the gas flow and recalibrate, he will not use it. I've seen many idle delta pressure measurements in cement plants that no one is using because they are not reliable. What are the savings? In the example that I mentioned in Midlothian, Texas, there was also a very nice paper on the IEEE conference in Kansas uh, many years ago. Um, the, electric, uh, the electric power savings were about one kilowatt hour per ton of grinding material. So we had a continuous saving of about 10 euros per hour. With the price of our systems, I mean, we're talking 1,000 to 2,000 hours of return on investment. That's why we, are, that's why we have sold so many worldwide because the measurement is not a major investment, but if you do it at the most low hanging fruit, um, you get big return and you get fast return investment. The other one I would like to um, mention here is the typical down comma measurement, the main regulation of uh, the gas flow from the kiln. Down comma measurement has been one of the favorite ones for Lafarge Holzim. They use this measurement frequently to put into their optimizers and run the process far more flatlined. Um, again, the example that I can show here, we have typical oxygen values that are measured. Our measurement does not replace an oxygen measurement. Our measurement is a an, is an supplement, an add-on. So you have a cascaded controller, you have the oxygen measurement for the long term, and you have our cascaded controller to, to control away the ripple and make 
the ID fan operation more flat line. Again here, that's the solution, put our system in, regulate the ID fan and stabilize the operation of the kiln. And by that also save fuel and save fan power. Again here, what's the ROI? Um, here, energy consumption 5% due to steady kiln operation at a 3,000 ton per day kiln, we are talking about 20,000 euros per month. So again, downcomer is so popular because the return on investment is so short. But the plant manager doesn't stick out his neck very far when he says, I want to have one or two real good gas flow measurements to really have a better operation. It's a very big quality control and you can be sure you make money on it. You don't spend it, you make money, very short term. The last one I'm gonna talk about, and then I'm also already through with this, is uh, pre cal sign up con control by tertiary air. I know, especially in India, there's a big thing about NOx. You have SNCRs, you have to reduce NOx by non-catalytic re uh, reaction. Ammonia is very expensive in India. And it's, it's not so easy to get. So how much can you squeeze your NOx down by a better pre calciner control? You have to know how much coal you blow into your pre calciner but you also have to know how much oxygen you're putting into it. What's the stoichiometry? And to know the stoichiometry, you have to know the tertiary airflow into your pre calciner So again, the thing here is how can we um, measure this? The Promicon system goes right into the tertiary air duct at 1,000 degrees C. Um, we can measure the amount of tertiary air into the pre calciner and that's basically helping to stabilize the process to reduce downtime, downtimes of the calciner. Very often you also have material clogging problems in the calciner, which are also based on temperature windows. And these temperature windows are controlled by the stoichiometry. So this is basically, um, I, could I could give you much more locations, but I'm, the time is too short for that today. Waste heat recovery would be a very nice uh, example, but also waste heat um, uh, uh, boilers input would be nice. Finished product mill. Um, the list goes on and on and on. I've shown you the most three popular ones, raw mill, downcomer, tertiary air duct. But I'm sure in your plant, there, there are much more places where you could measure. We have uh, distributed the system now to many places of the world and have a lot of happy clients. So basically, to summarize, um, the motivation is really, I wouldn't even say you would, you would not like, you would like to avoid drifting measurement. The, the conventional measurement systems are not working in your plant. If you put a delta P measurement in a down camera, it will, it will work for 10 minutes or one hour, right? So you would like to have a digital drift-free measurement system that, um, that can allow you to control some plant parameters that you have not been able to control directly. You had to work around that by temperature and pressure. And now here, this measurement, the digital measurement is here to open up the road for much better um, optimization of the plant using your control uh, loops, but also using your optimizers. So a long list of happy clients. Also here, just a few clients. We have much more than these. Uh, we have worked with Europeans, American, but also Mexican, Chinese, we have big clients in China that are building new plants around the world um, buying our equipment. So I'll be happy to answer any and all of your questions. Um, and thank you for listening in on my presentation. And um, I'll be happy to take any of, any of your questions right now.